session with your boy Franklin. If this is your first time watching, thank you for stopping by. Um, if you're watching this as a playback, thank you for doing so. Uh, for those that were online with me for a bit, uh, terrible technical glitch tonight. So let's see who is online. The technical glitch tonight is a bit, uh, bit frustrating, but uh, yeah. Roxy the designer. Right, we hit the like button. If you can hear me, hit the like button so we can gain traction. Uh, apologies for the uh, yeah for uh, apologies for the technical glitch, man. Bit frustrated. Alida Kelly, what's up? What's up, people? Osita, what's up, brother? Thank you for sticking by, man. Ah. Uh, one of the things that I hate most is uh, technical difficulty, man. What's going on? What's going on? David Osilaja, what's up, my brother? Yeah. So anyway, let me crack on. Let me crack on. Let me crack on. So, ah, uh, man, it's uh, Mama's business. What's up, sis? How you doing? What's going on, everybody? So if you're watching this as a playback, uh, thank you for, for doing so. Um... If you were watching me earlier, it's just, you know, technical difficulty, but we're back on. So, um, yes. Very quickly, these um, episodes sponsored by Adron Homes and Properties based in Nigeria. I have a partnership with them. A lot of you know these already. You've uh, jumped on a wonderful opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity, particularly if you're diaspora and you want to own land, back home from as little as 50,000 Naira. They've got wonderful Ilea Salah offers, you know, um, offers going. So, uh, which ends on the 7th of this month of August. So jump on it. All you gotta do is just send me an email to foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. Look in the description below for my email address. Say, Franklin, please send me the application pack to own a parcel of land. In Nigeria the beauty is you can own the parcel of land for investment purposes for yourself and or for your children or you can decide to build in any of the estates they've got lands in Ibadan, Nasarawa, uh, Lagos, Abuja, um, Jebu, uh, Shimawa and the list goes on and scattered across the nation wonderful wonderful estates so uh, they've got wonderful offers going on you can pay you know spread your costs across uh, six months 12 months, 24 months, um, the offers are absolutely flexible. I understand, you know, you live in the diaspora, you've got a truckload of um, outgoings and stuff, but it's dead easy for you to become a landowner. If you have the money to buy outrightly, great. If you don't, you can put down a deposit for as little as 50,000 Naira, and um, you can spread the rest across whatever payment plan is flexible for you. Now, um, I can't see your email, sir. Ah, in the description, well, my email address, let me see, can I type that? No, I can't type on here. Uh, my email address is uh, foodchannel1960 at gmail.com. Somebody help me type it. Foodchannel1960, 1960 at gmail.com. Just say, hi, Franklin, please send me the application pack for the Adron Homes um, land. That's it. So let's crack on. Let's crack on with today's story. All right? Let's crack on. So in the past, for those that have been watching me for a minute, I've talked about, uh, you know, life in the diaspora, especially for those that decide to migrate abroad, you know, for the first time. So these person talks about how, um, you know, they got um, basically got kicked out within three months of staying with, you know, um, their their sibling. So I'm sure this particular brother had a lot of expectation. Himself, wife, and two children got flung out after three months. Well, I'll dive into the story. It's a very straightforward one, but I think my number one point is um, where a lot of people that go abroad to live with people, uh, the number one problem is expectation. Your problems usually emanate from what your expectations are. And if I say expectations, right, I've got two bullet points. 
underneath the word expectation. Expectations sometimes get uh, built up um, uh, in two ways as far as I'm concerned. It might be your personal uh, uh, totally wrong expectation of where you're going to or your host uh, failure to do your findings, failure to carry out your research and stuff like that. And sometimes the host themselves, which is it might be a friend or family who's already living in the diaspora, sometimes they are the culprits. They are the ones who have managed to wrongly raise your expectation through what? Their own actions, through, through lies, through misrepresentations, through blowing their personal profiles out of proportion. So what tends to happen is you are contemplating to now go abroad and hopefully leave with them and um, they've gone ahead by telling you that they are this big, they are earning that much, they are these comfortable in England or they are that comfortable in, in Canada or this is how big they are in Germany, right? And um, what tends to happen is when, when the visitor then lands, um, they tend to unravel a lot of all the misrepresentations and the lies and stuff. People do that a lot, which is why I've said it before. There is no point going on to the motherland and lying to friends and families and telling them that you are this big, uh, this is what you're earning in England or in the U US and all that boastful nonsense. It will come back to bite you in the bum. Even if they don't come abroad to leave with you, um, what tends to happen is a lot of those people around you, when they glean up that information, they turn out to be leeches. They become parasitic and then they they have a high expectation and they start making, you know, very irritating demands, all right? So do be careful. Keep your mouth shut. Don't blow yourself out of proportion. So anyway, these brother migrated abroad and um, his own blood brother, same father, same mother, who's been living abroad before him, you know, had previously agreed to host him and, um, you know, his uh, wife and two children. Hmm. And um, like I say, for those that have been watching me for a while, I've said this previously, you know, expectations, expectations, expectations. If you are going to leave abroad, and uh, unfortunately, there's a clash of culture now. So um, in Africa, let me say in Nigeria, unfortunately, there's a culture of, um, you know, people tend to have um, parasitic um, behavior. We call it culture. It's a to toxic culture in the sense that people just want to go leave with someone else, especially when they believe that the person, uh, the host has a bit of change on them. They expect the host to just pick all the tabs and um, just pay for everything. Food, drink, electricity, from the start to, to finish, even close them, even give them handouts and stuff. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an entitlement culture that's unfortunately deeply embedded in a lot of our people, both young and old. So when people then travel abroad, there's this sense of entitlement will catch up with you because uh, like in Africa, let me say in Nigeria, if you are a, an uncle or an auntie or a member of somebody's family and you got a bit of money and stuff, the mentality of being a leech is very common amongst our people. So, so for example, uh, they know that, oh, here is Uncle Franklin, right? Uncle Franklin sells building materials or he's a... Uh, He's an engineer and he's got a bit of money on him, right? So the rest of the family, they every time they come around you, even with their children, they behave like liches. They expect you to just part with money. And it's the same mentality when you go abroad, when people back home, they believe that because you're abroad, you're definitely picking money on the pavement. You understand what I'm saying? So these mentality of uh, dependency, of of um, um, beggar mentality of um, constantly expecting handouts from people. When people have this mentality deeply rooted in them, and then they take that, and then they take that abroad, my goodness, it, it tends to cause 
trouble. So the whole idea of our Omo Yamini is my brother, uh, this. So you go with your wife. I read this brother's uh, story, long wounded story, right? And then you travel abroad with your wife. That's you, wife, two children. That's four of you. Four mouths to feed two or three times a day. That's, that's a truckload of responsibility for anyone to take on, right? But the poverty, like somebody said now, the poverty-stricken mentality, it's a very, very, it's a parasitic um, mentality, toxic culture that's deeply rooted in our society that a lot of people take abroad and these things destroy family structures. So he went to stay with his brother and they were good. You know, they were, oh, welcome, welcome to the UK. You know, they were feeding them, you know, um, they're eating, they wake up, they have breakfast, they have lunch, they have dinner. And anybody living abroad would tell you, you know, for the most part, the way, even the way the life abroad is designed is, yes, if you work hard, you work for your own money, whatever you do for a living and stuff, is actually designed for self-sustainability, that you'll be all right, provided you don't live beyond your means. If myself, my wife, and my children, depending on the household income, we should be okay to pay our rent, mortgages, and uh, all the bills, food shopping, take care of the children, clothing, and stuff. It's actually designed in a way that you, if you don't live beyond your means, you are you find that you're self-sustainable, right? You'll be all right. You probably will have, you know, some decent savings and stuff. But it's not exactly designed that in such a way that you have abundance left and then you can just absorb another reasonably sized family. No. Because within a short while, it would expose, it would leave holes in your pocket, it would expose, you know, your finances and all that stuff. So anyway, this guy said, uh, we moved in and um, it was great the first month or whatever said my, my wife uh and you know the children we were having a good time he said uh, he had a, a prior uh previous conversation with his um his brother about finding his his feet i think he came in on some professional grounds and there was some kind of um i don't know complications arose with the company that was going to give him a job and all that stuff so anyway he was staying with the brother they were being fed now this brother admitted in the email that uh yeah I, I had some money with me when i when i went to the uk and stuff but my brother had been there longer so uh, at the end of the day he should know that you know i had spent a lot of money to apply from nigeria with my family and uh, i expected him to now let let me be clear, the brother has three children. He has his own children, three children. So let's be clear, they live in a, I think about a four bedroom house or something. So the brother, the brother's wife, and um, their own three children. That's a family of five. That's a family of five with weekly food shopping and all the overheads has got to go out. Then you, you come all the way with your own wife and children, additional person. So the entire household, five plus four, that's nine of you. And they have to feed nine people on a daily basis. Like I said earlier, they can only survive for so long. So this guy was saying, uh, Franklin, you know, he knew what was happening in Nigeria, blah, 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 blah. And then he took monies and all that. So he said, first of all, he said, well, the issue was my, my wife, um, my, 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 I've always been the one in my marriage. I've always been the one doing most of the cooking. My wife isn't that great uh, with, with cooking. She, she does, you see, right there, right there that's just problem number one now your wife may not be great at cooking but so now somebody else is hosting you 
So what you're effectively telling me is your wife is utterly useless around the chores and cooking as a woman, right? And then so the your brother's wife is basically the one banging out the cooking and everything. And every day. And you don't think problem would arise. And he was saying, yeah, you know, the wife was cooking. Um, the brother's wife was doing all the cooking. And then later she started complaining. And then, then, then there was an issue where um, he said his second born child was a bit energetic. And uh, he said it wasn't intentional. Uh, um, left ended up throwing some hard object at his brother's TV and then that left some decolorization on the plasma TV and left a crack on the edge so that right there blew the tension through the roof busy it's a Samsung curve an expensive TV so there was already tension around uh, and some of you that go to people's homes and you know bloody well that your children are little demons they are unruly that's what I'm saying when you have unruly children like they can't they can't even children have got to be children they will play you know they're not adults but when you have your children flinging things in other people's homes and then end up damaging a six, seven, um, a six, seven, eight hundred pounds or one thousand pounds plasma, you know, TV that the person is probably paying for monthly, or took their time to, you know, to 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 pay for to buy, then your child comes and flings some heavy object and crap. Ask that TV, and then you want to say, Oh, come on, yeah, you know. So, um, there, he was saying, uh, he said, uh, he told his brother that, uh, you know, uh, I will, um, um, you know, calm down when I, uh, when I, when I find my feet, when I get a job, um, I'll, I'll work towards it, I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay you some money towards the TV. Like right now, the main TV is damaged. Do you see what I'm saying? Now, the wife, the brother's wife, stopped cooking, right? And says, uh, he says, the um, there was issues around speedy consumption. Speed, speedy con consumption of um, the amount of meat that they would normally cook into the pot and um, you know and he said well I, br I did bring some money with me but that went very quickly and he said um, my wife and my brother's wife had a clash you see the house belongs to women your wife Clashing with your brother's wife is an express ticket to get kicked out of their house. You can't defeat women in their own territory. You cannot defeat women in their own jurisdiction. If there is something that they are universally wired to do, women own the house. You can't go into a woman's territory and start getting all animated. Ah, you can't. You're done. It's the same thing if you're a friend and you go to your, another friend's house and you're a bad friend or a bad influence. If the if your friend's wife does not like you, you, you haven't got legs to, to, to survive in that house. If your friend's wife does not like you, trust me, you're done. Women will lock down their jurisdiction. They don't play. They don't play, man. They don't play. J just, just that. And, and the, the flip side of that, if even if the man is trying to be like, oh, no, I, I don't, you know, I, I, 
I, I, I, I don't, uh, I can't stand, you know, if, if, if the woman likes you, the women are powerful enough, you can get a husband to calm down. If the woman is on your side, you'll be all right. You can stay in that house forever. If the woman doesn't want you in that house, sheesh. The bedroom will be on fire. Everything will be on fire. Everything. Oh, Billy. Oh, my goodness. The man would realize that the duvet cover would disappear in the middle of the night. <laughs> we start from there, man. There'll be too much salt in the... There'll be too much salt in the food. <laughs> the usual uh, middle of the night, lovely... A uh, bonding session in the bedroom will mysteriously disappear. And when the man starts to feel the heat, he has to show you the fire exit very quickly. And, and of course, it's a territory. And if you are draining their finance, and the moment a woman realizes that her children are not being properly fed, and here you are being glutonious, being just yamming away and uh, nom 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 just siphoning all their resources and the food in the pantry is going your children are finishing all the ice cream is a major problem she wants you out can't blame them man you can't blame them a brother's designed for self-sustainability it's it's not exactly designed so that you can absorb another family as extra and be lavish nah I mean, that's the case for most people. There are some people that are probably quite affluential, but that number isn't very high, is it? No, it's not. So, this brother said, um, eventually, um, the complaint was narrowed down to his wife was, um, uh, wasn't helping with the house chores. Uh, there were issues that... Um, uh, he said he felt insulted that uh, the, the brother's wife said his own wife has poor hygiene and um, that their, their children are little demons, that they are, they're quite destructive. And of course, and that's the thing when it comes to the issue of children, it's a very sensitive issue. When you tell people that their children are unruly, the parents go into defensive mode, right? They want to protect their little ones. Some of them are in denial, right? Uh, they would aggressively defend those little demons. They know their children are little demons, but they would defend them anyway. And then the other person, too, has a justifiable reason for calling those children, those monstrosities, demons, right? And so, uh, leads to a major brouhaha, you know, back and forth, leads to bad blood and all that. Now, and um, eventually, you know, I think the lines were drawn and um, um, it was, uh, ah, and the brother said, okay, there was an occasion uh, where the wife said um, if she could hear them making love on a particular occasion, it meant that her children could hear. And, you know, they felt violated and so... Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, come on, bro. You can make love discreetly. You shouldn't go to someone's house whereby the host can hear you breaking each other's lower back. That's disgusting. And if the host can hear you, that means their children can hear you. That means your children can hear. So it's just multi-layered. Come on, bro. <laughs> you can, I mean, come on, man. You can you can always do the business quietly, man. So I suppose all of these exacerbated the situation. But there is something that I want to uh I want to address, like I was saying, going to leave with someone, right? Number one, the issue of expectation. 
Expectation is broken into two parts. It could be based on you going to the host's house, having a blown out of proportion type of expectation. It could be two, that the host themselves had lied to you previously, has misrepresented and blown their pockets out of proportion, right? Uh -huh. And then two, if you are going abroad to leave with someone, let me tell you, let me tell you, you better take enough money with you, okay? You have basically have got to be, look, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. In my house, this is me, Franklin. If my wife cooks for me, in my house, Victoria, my, my lovely wife, if she cooks, I can have four pieces of meat in my own yard if I want. I can have three pieces of meat. I can have five if I, if I want, depending on the size of what's being caught, what type of soup. I can, it's my house. I work hard. My wife works. What is in the freezer? What is in the pantry? That's my home. That's my jurisdiction. I eat whatever I want. If I want catfish in a plate right now, I eat whatever I want. That's my yard. Now, of course, when you do go to people's homes, I don't expect to be fed like a goat. But having said that, I also wouldn't go to anybody's house with a mindset, especially if they're hosting me, with a mindset of um, um, four pieces of meat. Even if they leave the pot open and they're trying to be nice, oh no, come on. Oh, please, Franklin, feel free. Never. Between one and a maximum of two pieces of meat. I don't, I, I have that by me. I, the, oh my gosh. It's so mentally shattering to go somewhere and they have to call you out on your mode of consumption. Oh my goodness. It's, it's disgraceful. One or two reasonably sized pieces of meat. Depending on what's in the pot. As long as the people, you know, you've got to be reasonable. Even sometimes a small pl plate of food, if it's fish or something, a reasonable sl slice, piece of fish, it's okay. I'm going to be all right. Because I know I'm there temporarily. Another thing is, if I know that I want to eat comfortably, I would rather contribute then. This is what I'm saying. Like, if you want to go live with someone, go with money. Be prepared to probably, if you're going to be there for a bit, find a job and contribute. Don't go to people's homes with a mindset of a leech. Don't be parasitic. Let me tell you, man, the whole idea of um, uh, this is my sibling. This is my, we're humans. Everybody's got blood running through their veins. Especially if you're being hosted by a basic person. They don't, it's not because they are evil. They don't have the financial capability to absorb all of your demands and or requirements. Don't go to people's homes. You as a woman, right? Don't go to another woman's kitchen, right? And be trying to feed your husband like you are in your house. Come on, bro. Your husband is sat in his brother's house, resting his balls, and you've gone into their kitchen wanting to serve your husband's plate, even trying to outdo the man of the house. Don't do that, man. Think about it. Think about it, man. You, your wife, and then you got, you got, you got two children. That's far of you. Even if you take one piece of meat each, that's four pieces of meat, right? Right there on the spot. And you're not contributing to the bills. You're not contributing to anything. So four pieces of meat for breakfast. Let's assume, hypothetically speaking, four for lunch. You want to have dinner. Four for dinner. So just for, from your own family alone, that's 12 pieces of meat 
in one day. Do you know how much that is in money? If you live in London, if you live in the UK. So do you think those people can really sustain it? They can't feed you for one week or two weeks, let alone three months. Go easy. Do you understand? Some of you, your children are little demons. Ah, I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like panda yam. Eee! What do you want? Eee, okay, do you want to taste the jollof rice? Eee, I'll throw the rice away. Oh no! Why do you pour the rice on the floor? Yeah, no, he's just a bit tired. He, he does that, you know. He has your child goes to someone, someone else's home to throw their food on the floor. And you expect them to accommodate like that little shit of a demon that you call a child. You know, incinerator, no matter how much. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Your children want to poke their fingers into all of the wafers and all the biscuits and all the sweets that are meant for those people's children. They are very unruly. Those little demons. Oh, he's, he's, he doesn't, he's lactose intolerant. Yeah, he, he doesn't, no, he doesn't really like his meat like that. He, he like his meat um, fried. And he, he doesn't really, my son doesn't really eat, um, um, he doesn't really eat um, he likes shin beef. It's his favorite. Do you know how much they sell a kilo of shin beef? Lenwe. No, my, my son doesn't really like mackerel. He prefers red brim and tilapia. And you're not contributing. And those people are going to be like, and you know when people pretend, they, they, they're going to be like, oh, no, no, it's okay. Oh, okay. He likes red brim. He likes tilapia. That's not a problem. It's, it's, it's okay. We'll, 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 buy, we'll buy a box of tilapia. Yes. Oh, thank you. He, he likes it. No, he doesn't really like the tilapia cooked um, fresh. He likes it. You grilled. You grill it. You go to people's homes and you're doing this. And then you have the audacity. When you tell people these stories, you filter the truth. You hide the actions of those little demons you call children. And then you lie that the hosts are in fact mean. I'm telling you, man. I know someone who's whose children went somewhere and they just went straight into the kitchen. They just saw apples on the table. She just told the ch children, um, um, apple, oh, nom, 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 finish all the apples, jumped on the suit. The ch people, the host, their children, when they come back from school, they would normally eat fruits before mom gives them lunch. No courtesy, nothing. So imagine those children coming back from school. Mom, where are the apples? And the mom is like, ah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you for the super chat. It's okay. The, the, we'll, we'll buy apples tomorrow. And then the children are like, Mom, I want apple. It's all right. You go into your room now. Your children are fighting to snatch the host's children's iPad. I uh, don't like iPad, go. Uh, Dari, but your man, she thought it's iPad, buy you. Oh, I remember Bonnie. Those little demons, you're fighting with the children of the host. Ah. Some, so, so my, 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 my point is, uh, some of you, you go, you go and live with people. Your expectations, right? We're talking about expectations. You expect people to absorb, to absorb all the BS in your life. 
One of the man, come on, bro. One of the last thing you want to do is go to people's environment, their jurisdiction, and they have to be tippy toeing in their own homes. Don't do that, man. This idea of um leaving abroad, you you look. This is why I say it like it is. It's not a joke. Go easy. Although, I'm going to say something. You know, a lot of the people that host you, they may be part of your family tree and stuff like that. They're not bad people. They, Some of them, they're trying to fulfill righteousness. Maybe they are your cousins or, you know, they're somewhere in your family tree. They, they, they're genuinely just trying to do their best in in line with humanity. So that, you know, they've lived abroad and then you are on their neck. Okay, yeah, we'll host you. But you're not even trying. You leave Nigeria. You go to the States. You go to the UK. You don't take enough money. Some of them are nice. Within a week of you landing with your children, they'll be like, ah, on Saturday, let's go, let's go to McDonald's. The gentleman has a day off work on Saturday. Think about it. He carries his car. His wife carries the second car, right? It's nine of you in McDonald's. Again, your children, those little demons, they're very greedy. They want extra fries. They like those chicken nuggets. They like these. Oh, uncle, 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 I want ice cream. And even you. Oh, I really like that chicken legend. Mm. I like that. Can I have extra chicken leg? I like... Look at the bill that they have to pay for nine people at McDonald's. You don't have a pound to contribute. And then, three days later, what tomorrow? You be a poor lama. Are you, I, I want to cook rice. Oh no, uh, Tolu doesn't want rice. He, he was actually just telling me earlier, you know these children. What, what, what does he want? Oh, he wants um, beans. No, he wants to go to McDonald's. Uh, okay, darling. And you know women. Darling, uh, they, they, they said the children want to go to McDonald's. Eh? They have to take your children to McDonald's twice a week ah because you came from nigeria oh my goodness so the idea of going somewhere and you expect people to absorb sorry what was that Oh, he likes pizza. Yeah, he likes pizza. P, P what? Ah, he's me mid feast. He says in 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 Nigeria we used to go to Domino's. All right, so you expect them to take your children to to order Domino's like twice. Do you understand what I'm saying? Somebody's saying, uh, why why why? Am I? But truly, I get your point. Uh, people. You say, why am I blowing this hot? I'm giving you life stories. You're asking me, you're telling me why am I blowing this hot? These are the real life stories, man. That's why people get flung out. Have issues. Uh, relationships uh, come to an end. You go abroad and um, you don't help them around the house. You expect the host's wife to cook three times a day. You want your husband. I, 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 another another thing that some some people do. Oh my my. Uh, sorry. Um, my husband likes his meat fried. He, he likes fried meat. No 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 no. Oh, you mean to put in there for you? No no no. He likes just like on you know like on Saturday just uh, fried meat, just fried meat, and uh, maybe with palm wine and just just to enjoy TV. He normally eats that after church. Your husband likes fried meat. I wish the host will take your husband to the meat market and show him that particular meat that he likes is 
9.99 per kilo. <laughs> Everyone didn't know coming like Ori what okay is it daru? Nija kuje. Egbe no meje ji lefin je unkura. Yeah. People are actually like this. Jekuje. Here's some women. It irritates me. Oh, daddy, wa, daddy, wa like eh, eh, um, No, I am. Um, mommy, today, daddy, wa actually like eh, um, need, need, No, come back, beg you. Oh, hey, but she shall not know you. But my daddy, wa she like any. Eh, I want daddy, wa. You wouldn't get your black behind in the kitchen and sort your husband out. Or tell your husband, this is not the environment to be making silly demand. From black America, immigrating to, 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 to Canada. I don't think you're going to be a good one. I don't think you're going to be a good one. I don't think you're going to be a good one. I don't think you're going to be a good one. I don't think you're I want like it. That that you are like it. Can okay. It boy, it back at all. I want that you are. Body that didn't die doing. Oh, but that didn't want SI license. You're joking. And then when you go abroad, I'm telling you, man. A lot. You see, what I was saying. The culture back home is the parasitic mentality. People just want to drop in people's homes and just, just want, you know, to, people like when they're parasitic, when, when you just pick up the tabs and pay all the bills. They just chill, they want to drink, and uh, they're the loudest. Have you noticed, it's always those people that come and hang out with you, they're, they're always the loudest. They're laughing, enjoying everything, but they don't pay a dime. So when they have this type of attitude and you take that abroad, is it true you lock your fridge? Who locks who locks their fridge? What's what's this one saying? Whose fridge? Franklin, is it true you lock your fridge? Who whose fridge are you talking to? Have you ever seen my fridge? Where where did it, where did that come from, Onye? Where did you see that from? What are you talking about? Are you sure you're not mixing Franklin with some Kamaru guy that you met on the tube? I want to taste this palm wine one day. Where do they sell it in Warwickshire? Warwick Shaker, village children are the. Uh... <laughs> so this, these, these are the problems. These are the issues, man. So these brother, eventually, his brother, um, his brother kicked him out, and um, he took offense. They struggled. You're going abroad. You don't take any money with you. You expect the host people to just. It's another thing that's prevalent. I digress. In our community, I don't care who is watching, how you feel about this. I will say it. These, a lot of our people do this. You see people, they travel abroad, they go to America, they, they basically go and stay with someone. That's why some of you, you go from Nigeria to America to go and have babies. You know what you do to those American hospitals what some of you do some of you are probably watching this or you have friends and and um um what do you what do you call it man you have friends and families that behave like that what do you do you go there to those hospitals you have your babies and then you run it's it's, it's disgraceful if they don't have those systems there would you be able to go have your babies you rack up the bills, thank you, and you run. I've heard horror stories. Some of you women, you go from Africa, you stay with friends and families in the name of you. Hey, I want to have my child in, 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 in the States so they can have American passport. Who sent you, you greedy swine? This should be a topic for another day. Oh, we'll, we'll dive into that properly, Kevin. We will. I've heard horror stories you go to people's homes from when you're like four months pregnant before the pregnancy starts to show right you travel to america you stay with them even after you've had your baby you have complications you bleed them dry 
and then you run. Oh, because of Kemi, I'm going to come back to that topic. My next live stream, we're going to talk about that, man. It's evil. You don't offer anything to the host. Some of them even have to take time off work. They lose their dollars. They lose their pounds sterling. They lose their money, right? To even help you babysit. They, to sit with you, they lose money. What do you do? You pack your bag. You collect your, your blue passport, American passport for your child. You pack everything and you run. My, 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 my. my. Wickedness. And you expect the universe not to not not to serve you hot karma. You think the universe won't deal with you. You go somewhere. You think in your tiny little mind that you are clever. It's selfishness. Am I asking you if you want to go have baby abroad? If it's if. If, if the system permits, because you claim, oh, you want to give um, opportunity to your children, it's wickedness. You put your, your truckload of responsibilities on the necks of other people. You rack up the bills in American hospitals and you run. You're wicked people, man. There's so many stories, man. Some of you even go stay with people. You end up stealing from them. You end up stealing from them and you run. You end up stealing from them. These parasitic mentality that's why you gotta be careful when you when you judge you know when people are telling stories oh nigerians are not nice oh Ghanaians are not this this oh africans are not this this a lot of you when they really do host you you are very selfish callous evil dubious charlatans they shouldn't even allow you to sleep right in front of their doorstep talk less of coming inside you rack up their electric bills, bang in the middle of winter. And when you're learning, one more regulate you all. They work long hours to survive. You rack up their bills, you finish their food, you block their toilets, and you disappear. Some of you, you go somewhere. You 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 are one of one of the worst ones. You go to people's homes abroad. You use their telephone lines to call Africa directly. Ha! Do you know how expensive those things are? How can you go to someone's home in the US or in the UK? You use their phone line to call Nigeria directly and then you, you deny, oh, I, did, I, didn't use, I didn't use it. You go, you go into their toilets. You can't even clean after yourself. It's like they've cut a whole log of wood from the forest. You block the toilet. You can't even clean the cistern. Come on, bro. You stay with the host. It's time to go back to Africa. You can't even give a parting gift to their young children. Just something to those beautiful angels that they've got. The children that your children finish their foodstuffs, right? Their sweets. The, the children that your children repeatedly snatch their iPads. You can't even give them a parting gift. Bye, Dami. Love you. I love you to the moon and back. I'll see you later. To do, ta da. Ah. This happens a lot, man. If you go to people's homes, some of you, you come from um, uh, from Africa for whatever because you're trying to do some um, from some courses in the in the process of trying to find your footings. You expect your host to then help you with some of your your school fees or your fundings at the college. The truth is, they have their own bills to pay. They can't afford. 
to absorb you and your demands. You have a college now, right? You have um, falsified some documents to get in. Now, the college is asking for X amount of money. So you're now trying to emotionally blackmail your host. You expect them to mysteriously go and look for $11,000, 7,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds. You now expect them to pay for your master's degree. How? What do you want them to find that money? And then when they tell you that, um, I, 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 I can't help you. You, you, you start disseminating evilness about them that they're selfish. Somebody said, block your house phone. Uh, have your secret password, which you alone use. And that way, no one can use your house phone. I mean, I agree. Password it. There was one that somebody, somebody told me, this is crazy, that somebody came from Nigeria they hosted the guy, he's like a, he's a cousin. And because he wanted to do something, he needed, a, he didn't have his personal computer. So the brother that hosted him said, ah, oh, it's okay, come and use my son's, my young teenager's laptop. Like, he had just bought the laptop two days before the brother's arrival from Nigeria, yeah? And he said, I've literally just bought this laptop brand new. I'm just setting it up so that my son can start using it right but you can use it just to surf whilst you are here guess what the laptop that belongs to a 13 year old child it's brand new out of the box the father had not even handed it to the 13 year old yet they gave you the laptop so that you can have internet access do your facebooking and what whatever be civil do what you gotta do and give the computer back to the owners what did this guy do he sat on the child's laptop Checking porn sites. That's not even your personal laptop. In someone's house, you are so horny, like, like a rabbit, that you had to be checking porn on their child's laptop. to deal with that conversation um excuse me um within the hours of two o'clock and where you sat on this laptop beating your me <laughs> oh! oh my goodness people are ter terrible man ah just imagine the 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 host the man Look, look. <laughs> why is this laptop sticky, sir? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, uh, sir, why, why, I think we have a sticky situation. Ah, that's terrible, man. But, I mean... On, on a more serious note, you can imagine, imagine, imagine being caught viewing porn on a child's laptop. So I'm going to show you the door, man. Come on, bro. You go to someone's house, they're hosting you, and you, 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 you want to watch. Oh, man. That's terrible. That's terrible. That is terrible, man. That's your reputation gone down the drain. You're finished. It's, it's, it's dreadful. Yeah, lack of self-respect. Thank you, Pauline. It's dreadful. How do you, how do you even look at the person in the face? Oh, so, sorry, I, um, it was uh, it's the work of the devil. I, uh, I, I, I was, um, <clears throat> I do. Uh, how do you begin to explain that? 
It's one of the most embarrassing things to do. People are ridiculous, man. And you know what's funny? That type of individual will still turn around to say to the host that, oh, uh, uh, yeah, so what? Yeah, I, you know, I, I, they will still call the host several names in the book. You go to people's homes, and I don't, I don't understand. So these mentality of, um, you know, going abroad, expecting them. Bro, they've got gas, they've got electric, they've got to pay for their car, mortgage, food shopping. The list goes on. They've got children. The list goes on credit card bills, loans. It's, 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 it's dreadful. You go, you go all the way from Africa and then you, you, you stay there. Not even you alone. You, wife, children. And then you, 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 you go, you're planning to stay with them for a long time. And then you're telling me you, you only bought $500. What's $500? By the time they've gone to the market a couple of times, you're done. I understand that in some circumstance... Let's say you're not genuinely not bullion, right? But you've got to, when you leave with people, even if you, they know that, oh, you're going to stay with them for a couple of months or whatever, I can easily leave with someone. You can't leave with someone else and not help them around the house. At least let them be the one to say, hey, hey, don't worry, don't worry, bro. Frankly, no, 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 leave it, leave it. That's better. One of the worst ones is you stay with people. You use people's bathroom, especially those people that make efforts. You go into their bathroom. You see how shining and glistening the bathroom is, right? You wash your filthy body. You come out of the bath. You can see droplets of your pubes. And you can't rinse that away from sight. You leave droplets of your pubes hanging in the bath and you walk out of the bathroom how how do these people sleep at night that's disgraceful clean after yourself every every, every time and any time i go if i ever have to spend the night in someone's someone's house bro when i'm done with the shower for me, the next, you will hear me as the host. I'm scrubbing your bathroom because I will leave that place squeaky clean. You use toilets. You sit on people's toilets and you leave skid marks. Come on, come on. And you don't expect, and, and you don't expect them to complain? Why should anyone, you leave skid marks in people's toilets? That's dreadful. That's dreadful. You have skid marks. Some of you, you go into people's toilets. Okay, you've got to do your number twos. It's just natural process. They got air freshener. Spray the toilet, open the window or something. Spray the toilet. You blow up the toilet like it's World War III and you match out. And you don't want them to complain. You see that you use the toilet, the children are trying to go easy. So, oh, mom, mom, uncle. Uncle, let's block the toilet. Oh my God, Dad. Dad, there is a log, log of wood in the toilet. Daddy, Dad. Uncle, let's, oh my God, Daddy.
Some of you, you go to people's homes, you're sat there in their living room, women, I'm, and I'm telling you reasons why you're going, people would never want you back in their homes. You sit bang in the middle of somebody's living room, you're undoing your hair. Your hair is everywhere. Your hair is everywhere. You put your dreadful bare claws, your toenails, they can see, you know, the, the heels of your feet is, is dry. You're basically, your feet are so dry, you're trying to put Gandhi out of business. It's like you've just walked from the top of Mount Everest, dreadful feet. You have the audacity to display those bare claws on their center table as well. You're sat in somebody's living room, removing those murky wigs that you've got on. You couldn't even do that privately in the room. And then when you're done, they can still see strand of your hair everywhere lingering. And then you don't expect them to complain. Oh, toenail clippings. Dreadful feet. Come on, bro. It's like you are competing with Gandhi when you put your feet in slippers. It's off-putting. Hygiene, man. Some of you can't even sit down at the table to eat with the family, right? You're drinking a bottle of water. It's like, it's like there's an Olympic of um, how far can you stick your tongue into that bottle of Coke? Disgusting. You're drinking because saliva, murky, chew, man, I can carry on, man. These are my pet peeves. You're talking, you're belching at the same time. There are some people, when they are washing their mouth, you're in people, I'm talking about you being in people's homes. You're washing your mouth. The host can hear you from their bedroom. You are in the guest room. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what the get to the bathroom to come check on you hello is everything all right yeah yeah i'm, I'm fine i'm just what the <laughs> uh, it's not because people are wicked man it's like they will vow that never never watch Sheesh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of you snoring. Goodness me. Ah. You see, imagine your host in their own homes. They are terrified. They can't sleep when you're sleeping. Ah. Mm. Ah. Mm. It's like there's a power bike in that bedroom. The least goes on, man. The least goes on. Poor hygiene, you know, completely having a blatant disregard. You go into people's homes, you hijack their own space, 
You prioritize yourself over them. You, you sidestep their own children. You're very greedy. You can't help around. So why you want them to kick you out? And then some of you, like I said, you go somewhere. Oh, no, no, you want to go to college. You've got these master's degree. You want them to absorb all your financial needs. It's impossible. And then you start telling people back home, uh, such and such, they're not helping. And, and, and in the worst case scenario, if it's a guy, they start unfairly targeting your mom and the um, so ever and the extended family start believing, oh, it's that person's wife. Oh, that's, that's basically not letting him help you. No, you're just bloody inconsiderate. You are the problem. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Life abroad. For those of you that are contemplating and all that, life abroad is not a joke. So if you ever, if you're ever going to stay with someone, I'm just telling you for free, those that can relate, it's not a joke. It's not a joke, man. It's not a joke. Most people, like I... I said earlier, I'll say it one more time. You see, most people have just about enough for self-sustenance to cater for themselves, the wife, husband, and children, right? They'll, they'll be all right. They have a bit of savings. They okay, they manage their lives. They are fine, they're healthy. But let's, 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 let's call a spade a spade, man. If they have to absorb you in with your own children, I mean, you have the audacity Imagine going to someone's house. You're in someone's house. They can hear you making love to your man. Oh, that's murky. In their house. And they have young children. Abasha. Some of you go to people's homes. You know they have one bathroom. And that's when, that's when you have the audacity to spread. You know that your white pant that's already turned to mahogany brown in the mid... Oh, stop it, Franklin. That's, that's gross. I'm going to pat out to Gino, go to Gino. You have the nerve to spread that weapon of mass destruction that you call pant, to spread it in, and you know they only have one bathroom. Your dreadful brass traps. Got that, the dark brown around here, man. More brat, to you know? Those brass traps. You can't raise your arms when you're laughing. They've got that coffee brown on the edges. And then you dangle that in the bathroom. The man of the house is just sliding into the bathroom. And he's just standing there looking at your pant and bra. And he's just breathtaking. Just like, how did I... This is my house. How did I... What goodness... It's dreadful. And then you still, you still, no, 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 I, I know exactly what I'm saying. There are some women, they are dreadful. You stay in someone's house. Why should they even catch a a whiff of the fact that you're on your monthly period, whereby you you take your tampon and wrap it. Even me, I'm a dude. You you wrap it. You go and put it in a dustbin in a place where everybody can see it. Some people are gross, man. Keep that thing to yourself. 
You, you want to go to people's spaces. The long and short of what I'm saying is you want to drain their finances. You want to drain them. You want them to pay for everything. You're not going to contribute. And then on top of all that, they try their best. You still call them bad people. No, you are the bad person, man. I read this guy's story and I just thought, no, this is nonsense. But I was going to talk about it anyway. Yeah. I thought tampons were flushable. Don't go s flushing tampons in people's homes and block their toilet, man. Don't do that, man. Just dispose of it, man. In in the via other means. Don't. It's gross, man. Empty toilet roll cupboards to dispense old tampons and napkins. That's all, I, all, all I'm saying. These things have um, absolutely destroyed so many relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, people go abroad, and this is why some people get flung out. And then they get caught up in difficult situation. They might not be able to then survive. They go from frying pan to fire. They find it hard to... Yeah. A broad life is uh, down in Africa because of sentiments. A lot of, uh, you know, people amongst ourselves might be able to get away with some truckload of nonsense. Life abroad, cultural difference. It's different, man. It's not easy. A family of five. Bear in mind, you better believe they have their truckload of monthly outgoings. On top of that, they have visions. They have vision boards. They have goals. They want to catch flights. They want to pay for um, for the pandemic tests before jumping on the planes. They want to cater for their children. They want to buy school uniforms for them. They want to treat them once in a while, take them to cinema. They have their own things internally. Then you show up, ta-da, husband and wife and two children. And you ain't got no goddamn money in your pocket. And you want them to... Some, some, so I remember this story. This guy was saying, yeah, the plan was we stay with them for like, for like, for like seven to nine months. Ha! Only. Oh, they're more than it. Seven to nine months. Those people will go bankrupt. They can't cope. This is what I say to people. They can't cope. Ashiri Matuni. They can't cope. <laughs> Somebody said thunder fire nine months. It's not a joke. If you were staying, check this out. Here's another angle to this. If you were staying with, with someone, right? And you're gonna stay for that long, and let, let's say you have you know, monies and stuff and, um, um, you know, or you're working or you have some kind of job, right? If you were contributing, now, that's a whole nother conversation. So I'm staying in somebody's household there. They're hosting me. So if you're paying towards the rent or you're paying towards the food shopping, all Gucci, that's, that's, that's great. You know, let everybody leave. Hopefully you can cohabit peacefully as long as there are no other underlying issues and stuff like that. But having said that, you want to keep your hands in your pocket and let someone else absorb all the expenditure. That's a lie, man. Five days is my limit with guests. Miss Diva. I also blame the host for entertaining another family without laying out strict terms and conditions. You know what's funny? When you lay out these strict terms and conditions, they'll call you every name in the book. They will say, you know, uh, you are less accommodating, blah, 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 blah. There's always... There's always room for complaint. Even if you are contributing, you must behave and show some decency. I agree, Samson. Absolutely. They will never say anything or let you go once... The price is right. So, that's the story, man. 
That's the story for tonight. For those of you contemplating on going abroad, even if it's you alone, right? You may not be married. You may not have uh, dependents. You may not have children. You may not have a partner. Even if it's you alone, right? Even if you're going, let me let you know a little secret. Even if you're going to your, your siblings' place and stuff, if you're by yourself, right? Don't be a couch potato in people's homes. Let Look. Let them be the ones to say, no, 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 leave it, leave it. No, hey, 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 no, 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 Let, I'll, I'll sort that. Insist. Don't just sit on your balls. Insist on doing things. Don't even let them catch you. Like on Sundays, they still spend a bit more time in bed. Jump into the kitchen. The wife cooked wonderfully last night for everybody. You enjoy the food and stuff. Take initiative, wake up in the morning, help them hoover the house, move the children's toys and stuff. People don't forget, they appreciate things like that. They would do more for you. But if you want to go there, you do nothing. If you don't have money, have, have good behavior, be considerate. Don't be selfish. All right? If they are cooking in someone's home, don't be the first to pull out a plate when it's a family. Whatever portion they give you, say thank you help to clean up help to pack up do whatever you can they would they would love to have you back sometimes it's not always about money right sometimes in fact if you're a really cool person people don't even mind sometimes they will they would always love to have you back they don't mind but most people are terrible they're terrible especially when you go to people's homes and they have young children Woo! Make sure their children don't feel uncomfortable. If you make their children feel uncomfortable, you have a major problem with the woman of the house. If the children love you and stuff, don't go smacking people's children. Don't turn yourself to some overnight disciplinarian. I am a no-nonsense person by nature. Let me, let me end up on this. I have a rule. My woman will bear me witness. I'm a no-nonsense person. I love children, but you see, when it comes to other people's children, you will never catch Franklin going hard or frowning at other people's children. Never. Never. My own children, I am not done raising them. I want more more bisa emioti komata. I want la mama la mama fejimo. Never. I don't, I mean, apart from if a child is in danger, hey, 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 easy, easy, be careful. The, the most you can do, just show love to children. Be nice. Don't go yelling at other people's children. Whoa, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do, you see that lovely woman that's hosting you? If you unleash the two-headed dragon in that woman by going to put your hand on that child, that's a lot. That's a whole nother, you know, type of problem. Some people, you go to people's spaces and you're trying to project yourself like some, I am Margaret Thatcher, some, it's very common in the black community. Don't, don't do that. Now, if there are situation out of love, right? If a child, a particular child is um, being a pain and a bum or out of love, maybe like a young teenager who is being unruly, you can correct them, chastise them, right? Tell them a few bullet points that you've got to. Leave it. Don't dwell on it too much. You dig. Once once I say one or two things, leave it alone. Don't go to people's spaces and be acting like, hey, come here. Oh, that, that's that evil uncle, that uh, military auntie and all that. One toy and you. It's very common in the black community, you know, if they're making you feel special by giving you some kind of special name like oh the children uh, oh uncle is very tough trust me the parents are just egging you on if you maltreat their children you see a different side to them don't 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 do that man and it's the same way you can't you can't violate my children i would tear you to shreds as long as i breathe as long as i've got blood in these veins you can't violate my children you can't. 
And they quite jolly one You can't violate my children. I am big on discipline, but hey, hey, yo, keep your goddamn hands to yourself, man. There you go. That's one of my philosophies, man. I don't, you never find me with other people's children. Never, never, not frankly, not in a million years. Likewise, my missus. Some children are really sweet, they're nice, you know, if, if they are relatable. Uh, I don't like unruly children, those little demons. When you sit on the plane, those ones that kick your seats, those ones that they throw tantrums in every shopping mall, you know, I'll just remove myself from the situation, man. You can look at them from a distance, but you're not going to find me, you know, battling another person's child and never, nah, nah. <laughs> I don't laugh, die for here. Hey man, 651 of you watching, Franklin. Would you be nice and give me the like button, please? So, life abroad isn't exactly how some of you might think it is. It's not easy. People work hard for every, every, um, Every dollar, every sterling, every euro, people work hard, man. So um, it takes a lot to keep a roof of our you know, heads and all that stuff. So just have, manage your expectation, particularly those of you that want to go abroad. Don't be a leech. Don't be parasitic. Don't be dubious. Respect people's spaces and then hopefully whatever it is that you're looking for abroad, you find it. Okay, But don't go to your hosts, people's environment, with the mind of violating them or drawing battle lines within their homes, within their environment. It will never end in your favor. Don't go to people's jurisdiction and draw battle lines with them. You wouldn't leave there, you know, you wouldn't leave there happy. So that's me done. It's, uh, it's amazing. Thank you. If you want that um, application pack for the Adron Homes property, foot channel 1960 at gmail.com. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Instagram at Franklin if you haven't. And I will most definitely, most definitely catch you in the very next one. All right. Peace and love, man. Bye-bye now.